and followed shortly behind by commander of Starliner, Butch Wilmore. It's, it's really a tough situation for the two of them. And, you know, they've handled it like incredibly well. And like, I mean, they're such professionals, which of course they are, but um, I think it's really like, at, at, on the one hand, people are like, oh, no, they're stuck in space. And on the other hand, it's almost like business as usual, like, oh, people at the International Space Station. But they are in this, like, pretty unique situation. And um, so I'm really looking forward to when they come back down and are, are being interviewed and when they're safe to just, like, see, like, how did they feel during that time? I think um, I think it's going to be a really interesting perspective. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been quite an evolution over the last three months. Uh, we've uh, been involved from the beginning through all the processes of assessing our spacecraft, uh, Calypso, and um, it was uh, trying at times. It was uh, there were some tough times all the way through. You certainly, as uh, the commander and the PLT of your spacecraft, you don't want to see it go off without you. But that's where we wound up. It's definitely unusual. I think this is the first time that something like this has happened, and um, I think. You know, in my view, I feel like it's really important for NASA to make decisions that are about the safety of the astronauts. And um, so when when they decided to not send them home on the um, Boeing capsule, I felt like that was the right decision, because if, if something went wrong, you know, it would have been a complete disaster. Um, you asked what we miss, right? Of course, you know, the things that we always miss, our families. I miss my two dogs. I miss my friends. But you know what? Like Butch said, there are so many people uh, on Earth that are sending us messages and it, it makes you feel just right at home with everybody when we're able to have those conversations with our friends and family at home. Space flight is, is difficult. It's a lot harder than I think people realize. Like NASA makes it look easy because they just like keep sending people up and keep sending people up. But like actually there's a lot that goes into it. And so sometimes this kind of stuff is going to happen. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, ignition full power. And lift off of Crew 9. Go SpaceX, go Falcon, go now. Lift off of Crew 9, now soaring to the International Space Station. Stage 1 Alpha. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. Copy, 1 Alpha. The additional people and the additional like ability to conduct experiments, I'm sure that they, they took advantage of to, send, to send, uh, send things up. They had two supply missions in November, so um, from a kind of... Uh, supply perspective, they're totally fine. Um, and it's, uh, it's more of just making sure that when they're sending the next crew up that everything is going to be fine. Freedom arriving. Welcome to the International Space Station. And Nick, welcome back home to the International Space Station. It's great to be here with bringing the 72 back up to 11. The astronauts that have been up there are gonna come back on a SpaceX Dragon. Um, and so that's actually, it's funny cause like the delay of that is completely unrelated to anything to do with Boeing and the Starliner. The, um, this delay is like kind of a standard one of just like, oh, we're gonna give ourselves time to, um, it's, it's actually a new capsule. There's, there's multiple capsules of the Crew Dragon. And so this is a new one, so. Um, it's actually like very ordinary. It's just the fact that these are like two astronauts that are stuck in space that people are like, they're delayed even longer. And like, <laughs> it's just like icing on the cake. <laughs> Position and orientation and attitude of Dragon as it makes its approach. Pass over the Western border of Quebec. The next time that they, that Boeing sends, sends people up, um, there's going to be a lot of attention on it, but I think they will have a lot of, they'll have several, you know, uncrewed missions to test everything out and make sure that they've solved all those problems. So I think certainly whenever it happens, there'll be a lot of scrutiny, but I, I'm sure that we're a few years away from that. You know, a positive outcome would be um, for for NASA and other countries to think about if this happens again, like what are other ways to get people back faster, maybe. Um, back when there was the space shuttle, there was some discussion of like, um, if there was a problem with the space shuttle, is there some other way to get astronauts back down using like the Russian space, um, space capsules or um, other equipment? So I think that kind of discussion is, is, could be really valuable if that's something that this will spur on.
I mean, I would ask them like, if they like what, what's something that's been an unintended positive um, in their time and space that like they weren't anticipating, but actually they, they like, you know, being in spaces, it seems like it would be awesome. And like, I would love to go to space, but like it's, but the reality is actually, it's like kind of smelly that you're really cramped. It's like, you're on a camping trip, but you're like <laughs> stuck in this like little tin can. Um, but I think that, you know, people describe this experience of like transcendence and like looking at the earth. And so, um, I'd be really curious about, you know, not the hard parts of it. Cause I think we kind of get an idea of that, but more of like, what's been something that's been unexpectedly wonderful is for Sunny, um, and it's a little philosophical, so apologies for that, but what do you feel in your body, your mind, and your soul? So I think that the, certainly NASA as an agency knows that it is, it's doing things on timelines way longer than any presidential um, term, and um, it's the type of organization that is, I wouldn't say they're ever like above politics exactly, but um you know, there's support on both sides of the aisle for the work that NASA does and for space in general, which is something that is kind of unique in American society today. Um, but I think that from my perspective, I feel like, well, I just want, I want them to come home safe. And I know that that's what NASA wants. And um, I sort of feel like, well, whoever's the president at the time, like, <laughs> I mean, Joe Biden wasn't going to be there, like turning the screws on the, <laughs> on the rocket. Um so I, I sort of think like what really matters is that they get home safe and, and politicians will do what they always do, which is take credit for everything, whether they had anything to do with it or not. <laughs> and like one of the things astronauts talk about is how many days, hours, minutes they spent in space so these these two are gonna have a lot to brag about <laughs> deployment of an umbilical from the dragon to the international space station